There's nothing quite like enjoying a barbecue or a drink outside on your own deck. It's even more satisfying if you built it yourself. It may seem like a big project, but with the right planning up front and taking the job step by step, you can do it yourself. Here's how. Before you begin, you'll need to design your deck to comply with the NZS 3604 building code. You'll need to draw up a detailed plan of your deck. To find out how to do this, watch our How to Design a Deck guide right here. Of course, if you don't want to design your own deck, you could get a licensed building practitioner or an engineer to do this. It's also important to check your council plans to see where your pipes are located. You don't want to hit any of those. And you'll also need to contact your local electricity provider for info on underground wires because these may not be shown on your plans. Rightio, before we get into it, let's have a look and see how a deck is generally made and what all the components are. So down the bottom here we have our post or pile. Sitting on top of the pile we have our bearer. On top of the bearer we've got our joists and then our decking. Now if you are building close to the ground, you may need to use joist hangers. So obviously we have our pile. Sitting on top of the pile, once again we have our bearer. Now we have our joist fixed to our bearer using our stainless steel joist hangers. And sitting on top, we have our decking. The first thing I need to do is build my profiles. Now profiles basically are a couple of pegs in the ground with a horizontal board attached to it. Now these are going to be really useful throughout the build. What it does is mark out the exact perimeter of the deck, the shape and size of it, and it's also going to set me up with a datum or a level line to work off. What I'm going to do is set our profiles up to the top of the post, that way I can use the string line like a level line. Now we're using a 32mm thick decking, 140 mil thick joist and 140 thick bearer, an overall height of 312 millimeters. Now, I also want our decking board to slip nicely underneath our door sill there, so I'm going to add on a few more millimeters for that. So let's say 315 millimeters all up from the underside of our sill. Now, that point there will give me the top of our post. Also, I can level that all the way along to our profile. Now as you can see, I've already got my pegs in there, ready for our profiles to go on. Now I've pushed those pegs out as far as I can, I'm restricted by our hedge there. Normally I'd go at least 600 millimetres past the outside of our building line. Now, as you can see, I've got a nail attached to my pile there, sitting on our level line. So all I have to do is put my level onto that nail, transfer that level line onto our pegs, and then attach on our profile boards. And I'll continue my profile boards along each side. And remember, the top of the board is the top of our posts. Now that my profiles are up, what I have to do is run a string line to the outside lines of our house to get the overall of our deck. So I'm just going to use my little level. I'm going to plumb down from the outside edge of the house onto our profile timber, plumb our level line down from the corner of the house onto our nail there, that way I can run a string line that's going to be parallel with the house. So I'm just going to hook our string line on down the corner and run it all the way out to our back profile. And I'm just going to swing it around on our profile till it lands on top of my pencil mark down there. And that's it right there. I'll put a mark here, put a screw in, tie that off. Lovely. That's this side of the house. Now we just have to work out our outline for the other side of the house. On this side, I've run a string line parallel with the house, but to avoid the pipes, I've offset it by 200 mils, which means I just need to measure back 200 mils from this line, giving me the edge of our deck. Pump a mark down onto our profile and run another string line back to the corner of the house. Rightio, so now I've set up the parameters on the two outside lines of the house. The next thing I have to do is run string lines parallel with the front of the house. Okay, so I'm just going to pull our string line in and out so it just touches the side of the house. Put a mark there, and then we'll use our trusty level, plumb down onto our profile. Based off our dimensions off our plan, I've run a string line out the front that's parallel with the back. Now what I've also done is measured from diagonal to diagonal on both ends to make sure that that is nice and square. So we want to make sure our deck is nice and square, it's really important. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is start measuring our distance exactly where our posts are going to be. We've got two rows of piles, so I'm going to put two rows of strings in here and start marking out where our posts are. Now as per our dimensions on the plan, I've got a row of piles that's 550 from the front of our deck. So what I need to do, from our string line there, measure 550 on either end and put a string line up. Okay, this is my first row of post holes. Now I need to start marking out for our second row of post holes. So as per our plan, I'm going to come 550 off the house and run a string line parallel. And I'll do the same for my third row of post holes at the back here. Okay, all my string lines are up. Next thing I have to do is start marking out exactly where our post holes are, as per the dimensions on our plan. Now the first one is 200 millimetres from the outside of our building line. Mark that. And then our next centre is 1298, and so we'll add that onto our 200, so that's 1498. And 1298 to the centre of the next two. And then 200 millimetres from the outside to the centre of the end post. Okay, now I have to do the same for out the front. And the back. Now as per our plan I've got four anchor poles, so I'm just going to label those on the floor now because they go 900 millimetres deep. Anchor piles help provide bracing and support to our structure. Then drop your string lines to start digging your holes. Now as per our plan, I need a 300mm diameter hole that's down 450mm deep for our ordinary piles. Our anchor piles go down 900mm deep. I've got myself a 300mm auger on our two mound post hole borer. Nothing left to do but to rip into it. You can of course dig your holes by hand, but a post hole borer will save you heaps of time. Clean the hole out, check your depth, and crack on with the rest. I got all my post holes are dug, that's fantastic. I originally set up my string line to the center of our post holes. Now my post is 125 millimeter square, so I'm just gonna move that line over, say, 62 millimeters, so it runs in a nice straight line on the side of our posts. And we'll do exactly the same on our other string lines. Next, I'll brace my posts ready for concrete. Drop a block at the bottom, and set the posts on it. Now I've got a bit of six by two here that's gonna sit in line with our string line. That's gonna help keep our post straight left to right. And I've got an angle brace ready that's gonna go on the top of the post back down to a peg and that's gonna help it keep it plumb. Okay, so I've just cut up some pegs out of an old bit of decking. Use whatever you like. And we're just gonna fix that next to our angle brace. Now it's a good little tip, when you are putting your angle braces on, bring them out of your work surface. I'm going to come around here with my barrows of concrete, so we want to get all your braces as far away from all your holes as you can possibly get them. It's looking lovely, now just do exactly the same for all the rest. All the posts are braced and plumb, next I'll concrete them in. You can mix it by hand, but a concrete mixer speeds up the job. Simply follow the instructions on the back of the bag. Rightio, all my concrete's already mixed. I'm just about to put it in the hole. Now on a few of these, I'm actually just gonna use my spade. Reason for that, if I was just to come up with my barrow and dump it in, it could upset my post, and we don't want that. When all your concrete is in, leave it to set overnight. Okay, it's been 24 hours. My concrete's nice and hard. I've had a few showers this morning, but that's not gonna stop me from cracking on. So the next thing I have to do is pull off all our bracing. Next thing I've done is made sure that my string line is sitting hard down on the top of our profiles and I've given it a really good tight to make sure I get a nice straight line against our post. So what I'm going to have to do is use my square, square that line onto the post, all four sides, and then chop them off. Now just remember when you are working outside, always make sure you have an RCD on just to stay safe. Righty, all our posts are cut off to the right height. Next thing I have to do is cut a 45 on the side of the post. The reason for this is my posts are 125 square, my bearer is 90 mils wide. So I'm just going to cut a 45 off the side of it 
so our bearer sits flush with one side of our post. That way the water will just run off. Then I can start fixing my bearers to my posts. Okay, I've just made up my double 140 by 45 bearer. I've already cut it to length by getting my measurement off our plan and I'm going to keep that in line with our outside building line there and I'm going to fix it to our pile using our stainless steel nails. Now as per New Zealand building standards we're required to put a Z nail or commonly known as a wire dog on either side of our bearer to our post. I'm going to start marking out my bearers at 450 centres for my joist to sit on. 900 to the next centre and so on. Righty, I've laid all my joists down at 450 centres as per our plan. Now, wee little tip when you're laying your joist down, just make sure you check out if there is a bow in the timber, make sure that the bow is always up because the weight of your decking will bring that down nice and level. Now, I'm just going to keep this joist flush with the side of our bearer. Now, as you can see, my joists are a fair way away from the house. I've done that because I need to attach a boundary joist as part of our lateral support on the ends of our joists. So just for now, I've slid them forward. I'm gonna attach the boundary joist to the ends. Then I'll slide them all back towards the house, but leaving a gap of 30 mil between the house and the frame. 15 mil for the overhang on my decking boards and 15 mil for water to run through. So all I gotta do now is go through and nail my joists to my bearers. Two nails per joist. I've left the front ends of my joists long and I'll wait until most of my decking boards are on and then cut them back. As per New Zealand building standards and as per my design, I've got to put some anchor poles within this deck. Now our company, our anchor poles, they have to put in one of these 12KN stainless steel kits. Now all the instructions come with one of these kits, so it tells us exactly how we go about putting it on. Attach all the components from the kit using the nails provided. Okay, I'm just about ready to throw down my deck and before I do that, I just have to throw some nogging in. Now as per the New Zealand building code, I'm required to put solid nogging every 1.8 metres along my bearer line. Now, I've already flicked the chalk line parallel with the house, allowing for my 15 mil gap for the water to run off between the weatherboards and my decking board. So what I'm gonna do is put the decking board starting at one end, I'm half on the door, so I've already cut that end square. And I'm just gonna use my chalk line as a guide to flip this one through nice and straight. So before I put my screws in, what I'm gonna do is pre-drill the hole, because we always pre-drill our decking boards. So we're gonna come in approximately 20 mils from each end and put in our stainless steel 75 mil decking screw. Now the reason I'm using a 75 mil is because my decking is 32 mil thick. If I was using a 20 mil thick decking, I could go down to about 65 millimetre. Fix your board down two screws per joist. I've also left my decking boards long on the edges and I'll tidy them up at the end. Okay, so I've pre-cut about six lengths of board and I've laid it down ready to be screwed. Now I've cut these boards so it's in a really nice staggered position. You don't want all your joints to fall on the same joist. So just before I screw them off, what I'm going to do is place a nail in between each board on the ends only. This will add a three millimetre gap, allowing water to run through. And then I'm going to put a string line or a chalk line on the outside, parallel with my boards. So I'm going to fix the outside board off nice and straight to our string line. And then all the other boards are just going to follow suit after that and we get a nice even gap. To keep your line of screws nice and straight, give yourself a pencil mark to follow along the joist. I've just about finished laying all my decking boards. I've got two more rows to go. Now, just before I lay those, what I need to do is chop the end of my joist off because I've left those long for now and I need to attach my boundary joist which goes on to the end of those. Now, also I want a 15 mil overhang on the outside of my decking board all around my deck. So before I do that, I'm gonna take that decking board there off. That nail represents the outside of my deck. I'm gonna come in 15 mil 
and also need to take off the thickness of our boundary joist which is 45 millimeters so that goes on the 15 that line there I'm going to do exactly the same down the other end flick a chalk line chop the joist off attach our boundary and then I can finish all my decking boards Joists are all cut, boundary joists are cut, ready to go on. Good little tip, just get a mate to hold one end, and as you're nailing it, just work your way along one joist at a time. Then fix these last two boards. All my deck is screwed off, it looks fantastic. Last thing I have to do is just cut the ends off to tidy it all up. Now, as per out the front, on the sides, I'm also overhanging our decking boards 15 mil. So I can see where the edge of my joist is in between the decking boards. I'm coming over 15 mil on both ends. Now you could flick a chalk line and cut that off with a circular saw, but what I'm gonna use is my track saw. Now just to finish that edge off, to take all that sharp daggy bit off, it's going to use my trusty little block plane here. You could use a piece of sandpaper if you like. And there's our finished deck. A great new outdoor living space and ready for a barbecue. And don't forget to subscribe to the Mitre 10 YouTube channel for more great content or click here to watch more now.